uh, breaking into your bank account. This Equifax breach has got me freaked out. In fact, my um, my financial advisor sent out an email. We're aware of the recent disclosure, uh, and and then she gave us some advice on what to do and extra precautions that already they are taking at this company that uh, manages uh, my personal money, and it's just a scary thing. I went online, and of course, uh, you heard with Amelia, it said, I might be one of the 143 million, because yeah, half of us are, that's half of the population of the United States, so it's likely that you are, if you have a house or a credit report or any kind of loan, and it said, of course, I might be affected, so I should sign up for this extra protection, which I did right away. And then did they charge you for that? They did not. Well, that's polite. They didn't. That's nice. But who knows what kind of protection it is because my information's already out there. It it makes you wonder what can you trust, if anything, yeah. online. I mean, I'm hesitant now to enter any credit card information when I'm buying stuff. I mean, is this going to get hacked? And that's why I signed up for for LifeLock. I know. Again, I, I sound like a, a spokesmodel, spokesperson for LifeLock. That's expensive, for though, isn't it? I, it's not too bad. I, I don't even know what I. I, I have to go back and check what I spent, but it's not horrific. So what can you do is the question. Greg Scott is the author of Bullseye Breach, and he's here to hopefully talk us off this ledge. Greg, welcome to the program. Welcome back. Hi. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We do talk to you a lot because there have been a couple of breaches. Oh, man. It, you know, it'll, it'll, it, it just makes you crazy. Uh, it, it, this isn't the first. This is not the first no. cr- yeah. um, credit reporting agency that's had trouble. And it's not the first time that Equifax has had trouble. There was an incident with, um, with Experian back in 2012-2013 where Experian was an unwitting party to uh, – an, an unwitting partner to another outfit that was um, doing identity theft. Mm-hmm. And Experian was their partner. Experian oh was selling them the stuff they needed to steal people's identities. How did this one happen, Greg? nobody's talking mm. the best the best that we have so far is that somebody took advantage of and of a, of a vulnerability in a public facing website that's all we know that's the only tech information we have i can we can read between the lines on that and um assume sloppy programming but we just we just flat out don't know and in a lot of these cases nobody talks nobody Nobody shares what happened. Nobody shares what went wrong and what step, what steps they're taking to fix it. They, it, 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 it would. It, if I had hair, I would tear it out of the top of my head. It makes me crazy. Yeah, you and me both. Hey, yeah, it, yeah. Bald Greg, is beautiful, Paul. <laughs> That's right. All that money we're saving on hair care products, um, which I won't be buying online, uh, no. by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm a fan of of less regulation. Um, but I, I sometimes I wonder, and is this something government can in any way police or regulate? No. Are there compliance uh, things that, that should be in place that aren't in place? Or do we leave it up to every one of these companies to police themselves and, hey, good luck? I'll bet if you were to audit these guys, I'll bet you'd find in pick your checklist, take your PCI checklist or um, payment card industry checklist, I'll bet – I'll bet down the line they probably complied with pretty much everything. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these guys manage their liabilities by using checklists and not by common sense. And, and I've seen it. And the other thing that these guys do that's, that, that just tilts the playing field in favor of the bad guys is nobody shares. Nobody shares information. Everybody clams up because it's an ongoing investigation and privacy concerns and this and that and the other. I want to read you a quote. This is, this is from 1854, so that's 163 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's a quote from a guy named Alfred Charles Hobbs, and he wrote a book called On the Construction of Door Locks. Now, this is 1854, so it's way pre-Internet. Nobody had cell phones in those days. So he wrote this book about how door locks work, and part of what he said in the introduction was, many well-meaning persons suppose that the discussion respecting the means for baffling the supposed safety of locks offers a premium for dishonesty by showing others how to be dishonest. This is a fallacy. Rogues are very keen in their profession and know already much more than we can teach them respecting their several kinds of roguery. Rogues knew a good deal about lockpicking long before locksmiths discussed it among themselves, as they have lately done. 
163 years ago. Yeah. We ought to take that advice. Our, our, our people today, our CEOs and our top managers today should take that advice to heart. They should care and share and be prepared. Is it that's that, how I, that's how I, is it that they're not spending enough money on, uh, on security on, I mean, I mean, they all have it departments, right? I mean, what can yeah. they, what can they do to stay one step or two steps ahead of the, the black hat hackers? I mean, they, they need to employ white hat hackers who, who uh, can somehow use their smarts to stay ahead of the, the bad guys, right? Yeah, part of it. Um, part of it. Part of it's auditing. Part of it is awareness. Um, this, this specific attack, we've talked about phishing and, and some of the social media, the social engineering kinds of things in the past. This one's a little different because it, it took advantage of a vulnerability. Now, maybe that vulnerability is something that was patched and they didn't keep up with their patches. Maybe it was a zero day. Maybe it was a sloppy programming error where, where somebody figured out how to do a SQL injection. Mm -hmm. That we don't know. There, there are some smart things we can do on the software development side to, to get rid of these issues. But um, the fact is we're going to make mistakes. What could, what's going to be our recourse, though? Like, let's say somebody, you know, opens up a line of credit in my name. Are, are the credit companies going to believe me that this was part of the hack? I doubt it. <laughs> um, it wasn't very encouraging. It, it, I know it's not. Real, realistically, the credit companies are, are going to look at their forms and their checklists and their, and their, and their websites, and they're going to look at their numbers, and they're going to make a decision based on what the numbers say. And, mm -hmm. and if somebody stole from you and stole your identity and, and charged up a bazillion dollars in credit card charges in your name and then took a plane ticket off to South America and left you holding the bag, well, you're going to be holding the bag. Oh. Law enforcement's not going to help you, and, and nobody's going to help you. It's up to you. You're guilty until proven innocent. That's just the unfortunate truth in these identity theft scenarios. Greg, what do, you know, play out. what do you know about the CFO and the two other company executives that allegedly stole, sold off $1.5 million worth of stock a day after they found out about this, but before it was announced to the public? Uh, I don't know anything more than what the press articles say. I, I read the same press articles you did, and you saw my reaction. Uh-huh, yeah, right, they didn't know. Uh-huh, okay. sure. <laughs> That's, um, I have no insider knowledge about that, but I'm mighty suspicious, just like you are. There is a thing we can do. Okay. There's, a, um, there's a tactic called credit freezing. We can, we can call the credit agencies and ask to have our credit frozen. And so we, um, some states you pay money, some states it's free. So you, you, call up, you call up the big three credit agencies, you ask them to freeze your credit, you fill out some forms, you write a check, they freeze your credit. Now, anytime anybody tries to borrow any money in your name, they can't because your credit's frozen. But then if you want to go buy a house or buy a car, you have to call and pay some more money to get your credit unfrozen so you can do the transaction and then get your credit frozen, frozen again so, so after the transaction's over so nobody else does any funny stuff. Can you still use your credit cards while it's frozen? Yes. Okay. Still use your existing credit cards, yes, as That's far as I know. Idea. By the way, I'm yeah. paying yeah. Ten, 10 bucks a month for oh, LifeLock. Life lock? And they alert you. And I get alerts all the time. Really? You know, is this a legitimate thing? Oh. So, you know, I can justify 10 bucks a month. And uh, I think they've already saved my butt a few times. So, again, I'm, <laughs> I'm not endorsing LifeLock per se. There are sure. a lot of different sure. options out there. But people might want to consider that. It's yeah. terrible that you need it, but... Those kind of services are a poss they're a possibility. They're definitely, they're on the, they're on the to-do list. They're on the things to consider. They're, you know, like everything, there is no universal one-size-fits-all answer, but I, I, that's a good thing to look at, that kind of stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to look into freezing my credit. I think that's a yeah. good idea. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not planning on making any big purchases. Again, one answer, barter. Just carry like gold Krugerrands. Yeah. Just yeah. carry food go with you, let's ammunition. Go. If you need to pay for something, yeah. Here. Just go hide in a cave in Montana and go off the grid. Yeah. Some I, days I, that I, sounds I, pretty I good. I that line myself. I, I wish it would work. Greg, you're I wish the best. We could live that way sometimes. Greg is the author of Bullseye Breach. He's our go-to guy when we uh, have to hear harsh realities about this. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Well, thank thanks. you, Greg. Yeah. Hang in there. All right. Back to Can the I bunker. put in a plug? Yeah, go yeah, my, what... yeah, go, yeah. Go to my author website at dgregscott.com, D as in Daniel, mm -hmm. and I have all kinds of resources for people to go through there. And I, and I collect stuff and just put it there in the website for people to use. I'm going to go check it out today, dgregscott.com. Yes, ma'am. Very cool. Awesome, thank, Greg. thank you for your uh, insight, Greg. Very much oh. appreciated. 
Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> you know, I'm freezing credit. I didn't know that was a thing. Maybe it's going to be my either. thing right now. I am, I am deathly afraid. Well, we're all paranoid about our credit score, right? I mean, I, I guess, but I just don't, like he said, stealing your identity, racking up all this stuff, opening accounts, and then heading off. You're going to be stuck with that bill. It could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. It doesn't take long to rack up that kind of money. That's why, you know, this service that I'm using, I mean, there is protection. Up to a certain dollar figure, they guarantee that you are not liable, that you will not yeah, have to good. pay that. So, Although I'm probably totally maxed out. <laughs> There's probably no credit they, left. They might not take you, sure. To open something. They might say, right. never mind. Just bought a house. We're pretty maxed to the limit there. So good Just, luck. It's the American way. <laughs> if you can borrow anything, let me know. Yeah.